your president will now address you. Listen, everyone, up there in Portland. Uh, Nigel, thank you so much for getting the show on the road. A wonderful welcome. You've pretty well done my job for, it, for me by mentioning nearly everyone in the room, which is, which is fantastic and a joy. And what I would like to say is how wonderful it is to be here amongst around 230 of you. 230! I mean, if you spent your life playing for Sussex, that is a very big crowd. <laughs> It's wonderful to see you, and without you, it really wouldn't be quite such a good party. So you've made the day, and we'll make it our day, and we'll make it great fun. Welcome, everyone. Most people have been welcomed, but a special welcome to the president of MCC. It's a real honour to have the president of MCC here to chat to us later. Anthony, thank you so much for coming and joining us. That makes our day. And then that's going to be followed by... Devon Malcolm. And none of us will forget that wonderful spell of real pace. Pace. We don't see it so often. Fast bowling here at the Oval in 1994. I wasn't here, actually, to be honest. <laughs> I've been told it was a wonderful event. I'm, I'm one of the many that I've missed. <laughs> but then we'll hear more from them later, and that's a real treat. Thank you so much for being with us. And we have other heroes, they've been mentioned. We've got the Leica fly table here, and, and we love the Leica fly table. Look at them there, with lots of wonderful cricketers who, funnily enough, are some of my very best friends, sort of. <laughs> now, some of my best friends, we've got John Holder, who, when I was very young, bowled very fast at me at Portsmouth. I was scared, long before the umpiring days, when he terrified us again. But, but John Holder was well, so that's such a treat. Graham Clinton, who's one of the bravest batsmen I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone get hit on the head quite so often. <laughs> And the ball rebounded and he carried on. And Graham, with whom I toured India and the West Indies as schoolboys and young cricketers, sit roomed with him. And I can tell you, I learned words then that I never knew before. <laughs> Devon Malcolm, who can come up, please, to present the first award of the afternoon. Thank you very much, Ralph. This is for the uh, Perry Lewis Kershaw Memorial Trophy that we give each year to uh, the Critics Society 11 player, most deserving of it. And this year's award is going to be shared between two Critics Society stalwarts who sadly made their final appearances for us in 2018. Andy Graham, first of all. Andy soldiered on bravely in the face of injury, but has finally had to submit after many years of rugby and cricket knocks. He was introduced to us by his old Edinburgh Academy opening partner, Ronald Patterson. Uh, and Andy has hit 236 runs in exactly 200 appearances for us, and he's also taken many outstanding catches at first slip. He's also been the most organised and supportive of all match managers served on that committee for many years, bringing much needed good sense to our deliberation, and was our first convener, which is an appropriate Scottish term. Fortunately for us, he intends to continue in these roles, and more especially, he has been and remains a very good friend to many of us. I know we'll see Andy and Jill at many of our games, and two of Andy's proudest moments have been at Rudgwick down in Sussex in 2016, uh, Andy's son Angus hit a glorious 121, including more sixes than I can remember. And then the next year, Angus batted with his sister, Rosie, at the same place. And Andy's here today with his brother, Tom. And our second, our second winner, winner is Andrew Moss. At the end of last season, Andrew told us he played the last of his 266 games for Society Eleven. Andrew scored 5,961 runs, and every one of them was with a grace and elegance that nobody else could match. Wonderful player. Andy's 
record, Andrew's record, 154 not out, not in green, in 1990, has only been better twice since. Sadly, the years have finally caught up, but even in his, in his last innings, we saw a glimpse of those wonderful shots. Andrew's cricketing knowledge is immense. As well as match management for many years and supplying a host of good cricketers, Andrew introduced my vice captain of the team, Rob Humphrey, to our, to our ranks. His wife Susan is with Andrew today, and I'm sure that Andrew and Susan will continue to support us in between their marathon cycling holidays, and that we won't lose one of the best cricketers, and certainly the finest man ever played. So the winners today, Andrew, Andy Graham and Andrew Moss. quite amazingly. Um, if I tell you that, for those of you I think who still remember him, Chris, Chris, uh, cricket, like everyone else here, was his absolute passion. And when I got to know Don, one of the first things I was taken to was a cricket society dinner. So I knew exactly <laughs> what I was taking on, and it has been absolutely wonderful. And so when he died in 96, uh, Bill Allen, who was chair of the Quick Society, and he is here today, which is marvellous. And I, I met with Bill and I said, I've got to do something that's going to contribute to cricket in Don's name, because that is what he would want. And he said, well, how about, Don was a member of Surrey, a member of Lords, and a member of Kent. And so what evolved was his cricket trophy, which supported the work with special, with, not with special schools then, but with schools that Surrey developed. And I can always remember the first school that won it, who came from Bermondsey, and when they got the trophy, they said, we've never, ever won anything like this. And this was the most wonderful start, I think, to it. And then Chris Ball, some years further on, as it developed, said, Katie, I know of your interest in special needs. How about we, spoke, we focus on schools and children with special needs? I said, bingo. And to see how it has developed to today is just so inspiring for me. And I want to pay tribute to the Cricket Society you know, to Surrey for the wonderful work that they are doing and the wonderful coaches who have developed. And it's been such a privilege for me to sit here with the winners of from Orchard Hill School and to meet the wonderful young people who are so enthusiastic and for me epitomize everything that this, the dawn with his enthusiasm and the enthusiasm for all of you here. This is what cricket is all about, and how it involves is a game for everybody. So I want to thank the Cricket Society, I want to, to thank Thurry, I want to thank all of you, and the wonderful winners who are here today. Thank you so much. In nominating this year's winner, Orchard Hill College, wrote, The college students have been involved in Surrey's disarray, 
which has been running every Wednesday out of the Stratton Leisure Centre for well over a year. Led by their hugely positive and inspiring teacher, Frank Innes, they start off with around 12 to 15 students attending each week. This has progressed to, at times, between 25 to 30 students in a single cricket and multi-sport session. The noticeable difference in some of Orchard Hill students has been huge. They've learned a whole range of new cricket skills, as well as, as, well as having to work alongside students from two other local colleges. This is having a real impact, not only at present, but having this regular sporting structure will allow the students to gain more confidence, benefiting them with their social skills. And for some, it's providing an opportunity to put their names forward for the Surrey Cricket Softball Disability Team in 2019. The strong partnership between Orchard Hill College and their students is a real positive, and we look forward to seeing their students continue their positive contribution in our programme as we enter 2019 and beyond. School representatives Frank Innes and Carrie Macy, together with students Jordan and Alfie, Please come forward and accept your award. Thank you. 
quick thank you to John, but also I wish you'd warned me before I had a few glasses of wine. Because <laughs> this is a my normal school dinner that I've had today. It's been lovely. Uh, it's fabulous down at Arundel. If you've never been, I hope you ever, I hope you do get yourselves there. It offers a slice of freedom to my children. Most of the time when they go out, they can't access the parks in the same way. If they can, they can't run around them roll around in the parks, that are certainly not our local parks, but when they go to Arundel, it's a sense of freedom for them. And the difference that I see in the children that I take on a Monday to when I bring them home on a Friday, I can't thank John enough for that. And this trophy will be treasured by them all at school. Thank you all very much. Not just because of his performances for Sedbo, 
Having been a successful run school round wicket taker for Yorkshire at age group level since under 14, he has since graduated to the academy and in 2018 also made his debut for Yorkshire second in the second 11 championship and trophy. Earlier this year, George, when just a few days past his 18th birthday, was selected for the full England under 19 tour to Bangladesh. He played in all six of the international matches on the tour, including the two under 19 tests, in one of which he played in innings of 91. Clearly, George has a hugely promising future ahead of him. But first, he has another season at school where he'll be the cricket captain in the coming summer. After that, maybe university and cricket for Yorkshire, and who knows what else. <laughs> George's mother and father, Gaylin Kevin, his brother Freddie, and his cricket coach Martin Spade are all here with him today. George, please come forward to accept your award. presenting you this um, incredible prestige award, uh, the Brother Award for the leading all-rounder in schools cricket, some amazing winners from recent times, I'm honoured and humbled to be joining such great creatures on the trophy. It was a nice birthday present from Dad rang me to uh, tell me the award. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank Mr Cashmore Till of the Creek Society for his superb organisation for our today's event. tickets today's lunch my family. Yeah. Yeah. However, I will be able to stand up here today for this most famous of grounds and accept the award to an offer the fantastic support provided to me by so many people. Firstly, I'd like to quickly thank Mum and Dad for their unwavering support for me and my and for me to my younger brother Freddie, who went on playing his own cricket matches gets dragged along unfortunately. <laughs> and um, thank you very much to those. Also, I'd like to thank Sever School for providing me with the um, support and encouragement that's been unwavering for the past five years, in particular my housemaster, Mr. Marlon, and headmaster, Ms. Harrison. Secondly, Yorkshire Creek Club, notably Richard Downs and Ian Jews, have been nothing short of amazing in their help. Um, I've been playing Greek cricket through York since I was around 10 years of age, and the whole setup from then to now has been brilliant. It's an honour to represent such a famous club. And last but by no means least, I'd like to make one more special mention. I would simply not be half the cricketer I am today without the efforts of this one man. He has coached since I was an ungainly 11 year old at prep school that struggled to get the ball for square. Over the past seven years, we had more 6 a.m. starts than nets than I care to think about, not to mention numerous late nights in his study over endless cups of tea. He is a great person off the cricket pitch and a great in the nets as well. However, during the game, he sits with Billy and managed to finish the telegraph crossword, which again showed his faith in the team on the day. <laughs> He was a player before his time when he played first class cricket and those who know about such things are the first to say they are amazed as how he did not play for his country. That said, I would like to think I'm a beneficiary of his incredible vision, expertise and, and ability. So a very public and massive thank you to Martin Spade, cricket professional at Seven Street. Hey, for our next award, the Cricket Society shows that it's moving with the times. This year's most promising young male cricketer appeared in just one first class game in 2018. Pat Brown is a T20 specialist and a highly gifted one. Combining cricket for Worcestershire with a degree course at the University of Worcester, Pat enjoyed an outstanding season in his county's title winning Vitality last season. He took 31 wickets, the second best ever, at 13.35, with an economy rate of 7.64 per over. In the semi-final against Lancashire, he took three wickets for one run in the 19th over, and conceded just nine runs in his last two overs in the final against Sussex. He can bowl at 85 miles per hour, but his slower balls are his strength, especially the knuckleball, which hangs in the air and then drops like a stone. In a pre-World Cup winter, there's been very little international T20 cricket, but Pat's time will come. Look out for this unassuming young man from Lincolnshire, Pat Brown. Uh, unfortunately, Pat can't be here today, but we do have an advanced acceptance speech, which hopefully is going to be played now. Oh, yeah. 
has a right to accept the society's most promising of player awards in 2018. Gives me great credit to the ones towards having come off the back of a great season of the Rapids, where we obviously won the vice of the last, so it makes it even more special for me. Unfortunately, I can't be in there for lunch with you guys today, um, due to our commitments here at Bristol. So I hope you'll have a great day and enjoy the rest of the awards.
James's mother and father, Richard and Louise, and his sister Lola are with him today. The winner is James Crony. Gloucestershire in 1972 and a hat-trick against Kent in the same season. 
A back injury forced his retirement in 1972 and prevented him from playing in a championship winning side in 1973. Setting in the Northwest, he played as a pro for seven teams from 1974 to 1982. In 1982, John became a first class umpire. Appointed to the, to the Test panel in 1988, he stood in 11 Test matches and 23 ODIs. He is credited with Don Ostler with the idea of a bowl out after a tied finish. After compulsory retirement at 65, John continued to umpire club and women's cricket, and he co-authored the highly successful You Are the Umpire book, which looked at unusual and difficult umpiring decisions. John's knowledge and manner are held in the deepest respect, and in 2009 he was appointed by the International Cricket Council as Regional Umpire Performance Manager for the Americas and Europe. The man from Superlative is certainly the worthiest of winners of this award, and the winner of the Ian Jackson Award is John Holder. Thank you.